You yeah, sit up on that podium at the New York Stock Exchange, you ring the bell as Charlie Pellet did for us. It's really, really cool. You're going to do that with Baird. We right are. Now. Yeah, the company I work for, Baird, is celebrating its 100th anniversary today, and the executive team is flying in to ring the bell in to commemorate that. And it uh, really speaks to the resilience <clears throat> of what today has become a pretty unique business model. It's an independent, privately held, employee-owned business that nonetheless still has the scale to invest in, uh, in all of its businesses and stay competitive. And that's really, in some ways, what Wall Street used to be about. Mm. Partnerships where the partners came to work every day, Tom, yeah. with their money on the line. That's still the way it is at yeah. Baird, and it appeals to a lot of the best people right. in the industry. Francine? And John, yeah, congratulations on your 150th anniversary at Baird & Co. How do you see your company changing over the next 10 years as we see more automation, where we see more robotics, and actually the future of finance being in doubt? Yeah, that I, would, I would use the word evolution more than change. Like any financial services industry, uh, Baird faces probably the most disruptive a set of changes and developments in the, in the 40 <clears throat> years that I've been in finance. The thing about Baird is uh, the employees, all 3,500 of them who work there, love the firm just the way it is. So our challenge, obviously, is not to stay still. There's no way you can stay still and remain competitive. But our challenge is to find ways to invest and to evolve that don't change the character of the firm. The character of the firm has always been about the kinds of values yeah. I wrote about in my book, Stewardship, which is putting clients' interests first, treating uh, customers humanely and caring about the communities in which they live and work. So our challenge is how do we invest, how do we grow in a way that makes us a better version of what we already are. And uh, right. there's John, a laundry list of things we need to do like any financial services firm. Right. How, how do clients want you to change? <laughs> well, clients want more. Art. I mean, the, the, the Amazon phenomenon is hitting financial services uh, industry. You mean Baird's the same as BlackRock, lower fees? Ba Baird, <laughs> Baird is one reality. Baird's clients and customers want more services uh, at a lower price point. Really? Absolutely. That's a surveillance <laughs> exclusive. And they want, them more se <laughs> they want them more seamlessly linked one to another. But what that right. means is enormous investment right. in technology is required going forward. And even though we have right. this deregulatory environment in Washington, let's face it, the costs and complexity of complying with regulation go up right. every year. I want to go to politics, John Taft, uh -oh. too much with a family's <laughs> heritage. Hickenlooper of Colorado <laughs> throws his hat in the ring. That is uh, an announced a gentleman out of Pennsylvania with all the advantages of Wesleyan University and the such. E.J. Dionne today writes about the Taft Republicans. They've moved in mass to the Democratic Party. You've seen this before. You and your family have lived this before. If moderate and liberal uh, Republicans move to the Democratic Party, is it for good or do they migrate back years down the road? Uh, well, as speaking as a genetic Republican with yeah. six generations of Republicans right. in my family. Are, can you, uh, are you going to vote for Hickenlooper this I'm not, not going to tell you what I'm doing politically. <laughs> You're not going to draw me into one of these uh, cage matches in politics. But I'm, I'm waiting for the Republican Party to get back to the kind of conservative principles. When I was growing up, Republicans were the adults in the room. They cared about things like constitutional principles. They cared about things right. like fiscal solvency. And I, I don't know, as a Republican, okay. I still think that's in our DNA. I mean, We're just waiting okay. for it to come Hickenlooper back. Hickenlooper had some fancy pants union general who was very courageous going back to 1865. I don't know how far back the Tafts did, but are you looking at your 1834. party? 1834. 1834, so you enjoyed <laughs> the collapse of the Whig Party. Okay, and they made, they if you say the, so. <laughs> they, re, they reinvented the Republican Party out by the Baird branch in Illinois there in 1860. Are, is the Republican Party going the way of the Whigs of 1842-ish? I, I, I personally think the Republican Party is here to say, my, my wing of it, the moderate wing, the Rockefeller Republicans of yore, <clears throat> aren't in the ascendant right. right now. But I believe one day we will be. There are so many serious challenges facing the country that Republican um, uh, values can right. speak to.